This is George Vandeman. He was also one on an evangelistic series. This church did an evangelistic series. They did all this work effort, and, and they looked, and it, they thought it was a failure because at the end of the evangelistic series, only one person gave his heart to God, and his name was George Vandeman. Little did they know that later on, George Vandeman, he started a ministry. You know what it's called? It is written. He ended up mentoring and training Mark Finley. Mark Finley ended up training and mentoring Sean Boonstra. And today, one of the most watched television programs in the world is It Is Written. And it was won to Christ by this guy named George Vanderman, who was won to the Lord at an evangelistic series where he was the only one who gave his heart to God. Beloved, have, have you been convinced that it's important to win just one person to God? Don't worry about winning 2, 5, 10, 200, 500, 1,000. You first work on that one person first. Once you get that one person down, then you can try to win 2, or 5, or 10. But the very minimum, can you win one person to Christ? As I close, I want to share a story. This guy is... One of my favorite stories, I'm going to actually end with this quote. Read this quote one more time, and then get into, I'll give, show you a picture. So we read the quote where Ellen White says in Last Day Event, that there will be no starless crown in heaven. Notice what this says here in page 282, paragraph 3. There will be no one saved in heaven with a starless crown. Remember we read this. If you enter, there will be some soul in the courts of glory that has found an entrance there through your instrumentality. When you get to heaven, there's going to be at least one person who's going to say, Alvin, thank you. I am here to heaven because you handed me that track. When PYC went out on Wednesday, when they went out for outreach, when you went knocking on doors, you handed me that steps to Christ. You didn't know this. But that steps to Christ, I read it. Then I looked on the back and there was free Bible studies. Then I followed up with those free Bible studies. And then I went to a local church. And then I went through the 28 fundamental belief of baptism. Then I was baptized. Then I led my mom, my dad, my brother, everyone to the Lord. Just because you handed me that book. There will be at least one person in heaven who's going to thank you and say, I'm here. They're going to have tears in their eyes because of you. There is no greater reward than that. I get emotional just thinking about that every time that one person, imagine two people, five people, ten people, two hundred, coming to you and saying, I'm here because of your efforts. Because you chose to let the Lord use you. There's no greater feeling than that. As I close, I want to share this picture of this person right here. His name is Blue William Moore. Does anyone know him? One of the best piano players I've ever met in my life. I would just, I could let him listen to a song, and he'll play it. I would say, hey, Blue, I want this song. He's like, okay, listen to it. I, okay, I'll play it. I went to... SPAC, South Philippine Adventist College, we did an evangelistic series and effort over there. And I remember very carefully, I said, look, I need your best pianist because I need someone who's going to play for the appeals. And he said, okay, you need Blue William Moore. I said, is he good? Is he that good? He's like, he's good. I'm like, okay. So I remember one time, I was playing the piano, and I can play the piano pretty good. I can play notes, I can play by ear. So. I was playing this song, and I saw him in the back. He was like, kind of like looking down. And I said, hey, I heard you're pretty good. Why don't you come and play? He goes on the piano, and he plays the exact song I played, but 10 times better. And I'm like, oh, you're good. <laughs> you know? Like, God's blessed you. Over my time, we've developed a friendship every day. We hung out together, we played some basketball together, 
we ended up playing music together. He taught me some new chords, and we ended up becoming really good friends. To this day, if there's one person who I don't see in heaven, if Blue's not there, I'm going to cry. Like, he'll break my heart. And I remember, he was playing for my appeals, and he goes up to me, and he says, I said, it's, you know, it's going to be the last meeting. And I said, okay, Blue, I want you to play this. And he said, Koya, I, I, I can't play for you. I'm like, well, what do you mean you can't play for me? You're like the best piano player here in probably this whole area. No, I, I can't play for you. I'm like, why? I need to stand for that appeal. The reason why he couldn't play the piano is because he said, I am the one who needs to get up and be baptized. I couldn't believe that. I was like, wow. Okay? So I remember the last sermon I gave, I preached it with all my heart. And I had another friend fill in, she played the piano wasn't as good at Blue. She didn't even want to play. Why are you making me play the piano? Blue's there. I said, because he wants to stand for the people. Here was someone who was the most influential person in the school. He had the most friends. And he said, I want to make the decision for baptism. Beloved, there are many people just like Blue who need to make the decision. But what if I decided not to make the trip down to SPAC? We were actually supposed to go to AUP that year. God closed the door. At the last minute, we couldn't come to AUP. And I'm like, man, Lord, here we are. We're supposed to do a week of prayer in AUP 2007. And... That door is closed, and we have to go now to SPAC. I've never even heard of SPAC. Where is that place? And we go down there, and when Blue made the decision for baptism, I knew why God closed the door. What if I said, oh, AUP is not going to have us, our team. We're coming all the way from the United States. We're just not going to go. What if I decided to do that? I wouldn't have this picture. I wouldn't have this memory. There are many people who are waiting for you to invite them to accept Jesus. But are you going to do it? If you want to say, you know what, I, I want to take that challenge. I want to go and seek and save the lost. I want to go find other blues out there. I want to find people who are just waiting to hear the gospel. I want you to just reverently bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you loved us so much that you were willing to give everything. All of heaven. For me, for everyone in this room. The biggest ripoff or the biggest trade in history was when Jesus decided to take on our sins and to exchange the cross, the cross that should have been mine, Christ took on. I thank you, Lord, for everyone here, for the decisions to live life for you. Help us to understand the power of just one soul, of one person. I pray for everyone here, under the sound of my voice, that I'll be able to see them in heaven one day. Save us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone, for your time and your attention. You've been very good. Please come back tomorrow for our last workshop as we conclude this. It's going to be really sad, but 
has to finish somewhere. So tomorrow we're going to be final, finalizing youth-led evangelism, and we're going to talk about the message that will bring an end to the world.